Yeah, you ready for this crazy fact? You know those energy producing organelles, often called the powerhouse of our cells? Yeah, mitochondria, see? You still got it from middle school biology. Well, they happen to be in their greatest concentration in this type of cell compared to every other cell type in our body. Cue the Jeopardy music. That was, you did good with that production team. You guys were actually like on point for once. This cell type is our retinal cones in our eyes. Yeah, wouldn't have been in my top 100 guesses either. The real question is, what the hell are they doing? All crammed up, up in there. I never know what she's doing. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to a, another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, we are talking about red light and how it can be used to stave off some of the common problems we humans face as we age, such as, I don't know, impaired vision. So if you have a goal of longevity or staying as healthy as possible for as long as possible, keeping your eyes and other key parts of your body functional is pretty advantageous for the cause, don't you think? So in the next 12 minutes and 78 seconds, we're gonna break down what exactly red light therapy is, the cellular benefits that it brings to the table, new data highlighting its eye altering effects, and as always, some tips, strategies, interventions that you can potentially implement. We'll also touch on my own personal red light strategy. Turn it up high, so Reggie. without further ado, red light, green light, one, two, no, 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 no. Production team thought it would be a good segue. I think they may have had a little too much red light today or none at all. So what's the hype? around red light. If you've been around this channel, you're well aware that we talk about the importance of light quite a bit. And typically it's in the context of getting daylight and avoiding artificial light at night, all in an effort to align our internal body clock and circadian rhythms. And if you need a little refresher on that or want to explore, I'll link some videos in the show notes below. Ideally, we humans want to align with the light coming from that big flaming supernova up there that's been sustaining life for the last billion or so years, give or take. And because that's been the Earth's main form of light and energy forever, we naturally have deep innate biological wiring that is dependent and reactionary to this stimuli of light. Pretty cool, I know. Now, what we are just beginning to understand is the unique impacts and benefits that each respective spectrum and wavelength have on our pretty cool meat suit and five pound mushy membrane and how to build therapies to harvest those vast benefits in ways we could have never imagined before. Enter red light. This is a specific spectrum of visible light with a wavelength ranging from around 400 nanometers at the violet end and 700 nanometers at the red end. And to date, this has been one of the most researched and tested light therapies there is. For the most part, it's been used as a means to deliver something called, fancy word alert, photobiomodulation, which is essentially a low level light therapy where combined LED red and near infrared wavelength light are applied on the skin into the cells. And to be honest, I was actually taken back when I realized how many gizmos and gadgets there actually are when it comes to this type of therapy. I mean, there's hats, masks, suits, towers, toilet seats. Wait, toilet seats production team? Is that why the bathroom in the studio has been? So what does this magic light actually do? What we know, or think we know. The data on this pretty well studied topic thus far has provided some interesting insights, uncovering dozens of potential benefits affecting the body head to tell. This long and growing list of associations include skin rejuvenation and wound healing, muscle growth and recovery, hair growth, cognitive improvements, immune health, improved hormone levels and sex drive, reductions and management of pain and inflammation, improvements in mental health and depression, better sleep, and of course, eye health. Damn, quite the list. But how exactly is all this working? Well, the short answer is in a number of different ways across a vast array of different tissue types. But there may be one key similarity, and that is its effect on our energy-producing organelles. You guys remember this one, right? 
our mitochondria, which we cover in more depth here. And this is what's happening. It's first important to know that our metabolic function and rate of aging are both influenced by our mitochondria and specifically the health of our mitochondria. Typically, as we stack up those chronological years, our mitochondria membrane potential tend to decline along with the oh so important energy currency we need to survive, adenosine triphosphate or ATP. This cellular decline is thought to be further accelerated by the common increase in pro-inflammatory reactive oxygen species or damaging molecules that tend to build up over time and damage our cellular health, especially in circumstances of unhealthy lifestyle habits and environment. I know, not cool for biological school. However, therapeutic red light exposure has shown in animals to improve mitochondria function, increasing ATP production and reducing reactive oxygen species, with research suggesting that it suppresses the expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines and provides a anti-inflammatory effect. Essentially, this magical light is thought to work by activating our body's own mitochondrial response to create energy and boost the functioning of our tissues and organs, all while reducing longevity liability numero uno, which you know by now, low dose chronic inflammation or the constant overactivity of our immune system, which basically accelerates anything nefarious happening at the cellular and metabolic level, making it bad for biological business. So knowing that and adding that our retinal cones have the greatest mitochondrial density in our whole body, and for the average person at some point in midlife, roughly 30% of the central rods in the retina progressively die, with the remaining ones experiencing reduced functionality, which even has the CDC chiming in, estimating that 93 million adults in the US are at high risk for serious vision loss. The question must be asked, can red light save our eyes? I've just been eating carrots. Well, let's just say improve their cellular health and thus their function. How about that? And for that, we look at this new research, the new data. Up until this point, there have been few human experiments exploring the dynamics between long wavelength light and aging. But there's been some previous data suggesting that it has had some positive benefits on eye function, with one study finding that daily exposure to relatively bright light at 670 nanometers over weeks in aged humans improved their retinal rod and cone function. Good for rods and cones. But dose and how dose is related to objective impact has been a little bit of a black box up until now. Enter this small but cool study from University College London, which seek to answer just that. They recruited 20 participants between the age of 34 and 70, 13 female, seven male, who had normal color vision and no previous ocular disease. Using provided LED devices, the 20 participants were exposed to three minutes of 670 nanometer red light in the morning between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. Their color vision was then tested three hours post-exposure and 10 of the participants were also tested one week post-exposure. So what happened? First, researchers found that there was a significant 17% improvement in color vision, which lasted a week in tested participants. And some older participants even saw a 20% improvement that lasted a week. This therapy was seen to improve photoreceptor function in aged subjects to levels commonly found in much younger subjects. Pretty cool. Next, researchers took this another step and brought a few participants back a few months later. They had six of the 20 participants, three male, three female, carry out the same test in the afternoon between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m and very interestingly found that no improvement was seen. The researchers attributed this to a previously observed shift in mitochondria function over the course of a biological day, a phenomenon where variation of complex activity and ATP production shift based off time of day. And when their color vision was tested afterwards, they saw zero improvements. So the benefits of this study were only seen when red light was applied in the morning. Huh, another day, another win for circadian biology. Now, 
With research like this, we need to keep in mind the limitations. This study was small and validations, as always, will be needed. And to give the researchers credit, they even pointed it out. Saying, despite the clarity of our results, some of the data is noisy, while positive effects are clear for individuals following 670 nanometer exposure, the magnitude of improvements can vary markedly between those of similar age. So as always, we need to take most data with a little grain of salt. And I know you haven't forgot about how your bias can get in the way too. So that right there brings us to our favorite part of the program. What can you do? Is it just my favorite part? Some strategies. For this, we're gonna focus on red light in general. Like I said before, there seems to be a red light device for basically every body part in this day and age. The important thing to remember is more does not necessarily mean better. And depending on the body part and your goals, the typical therapy time can range anywhere between five to 20 minutes. And as it pertains to sensitive tissue like one's eyes, make sure you have a conversation with your eye doctor or medical professional before you buy anything off the interwebs. I personally get my red light therapy via a full body tower, where I spend about 15 minutes each morning, seven minutes on the front, seven minutes on the caboose, as I close out my morning routine. My tower is from a company called Clearlight, which is an add-on to my infrared sauna, but another very popular brand is Juve, J-O-O-V-E which has been a leader in the market for years. I keep it simple and don't currently apply any direct eye therapy besides the ambient light that I pick up from the full body tower. Again, I would caution buying any random eye device off the interwebs. You're gonna want a medical grade device that is approved from your eye doctor. Remember, eyes, just like the rest of your body, but eyes, kind of important. In the end, this is just another tool in the longevity toolbox, but one that certainly isn't necessary to start your health journey. So wherever you are, know that there is no better day to get going than today, and no better day to start upping your health literacy. The more we understand our biological wiring, the better we can hack it. I just wish I could begin to understand what the hell's going on in production team's head. I mean, red light toilet seats? Seriously?